the most common things that you will always hear from your clients is going to be, hey, take this footage and make it pop. So there are so many different ways to approach that. And there are many different techniques that I've shown you on this channel how to do that. This is going to be one of the most practical and simplest ways to get there. Footage that I'm using here is Rec. 709. I don't even know which camera is shot on. This is one of the things that you guys have asked me to cover before. So I'm going to be showing you that. And we recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing and working with 8-bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus, we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades and some of my personal LUTs. So check out the free training link is up top and in the description below. And please do me a favor, pause this video for a second, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. Let's roll the intro. All right, so this is going to be a pretty straightforward tutorial. Three simple tricks to make your footage pop. So the note tree is going to be super, super simple. So we're going to have our first node, then we're going to have another one here. Then I'm going to have a parallel node and one more node, which I'm going to call my custom curves. OK, and I'm going to make my first node primaries. If you want to know why I keep the sequence the way it is for my nodes, watch my free training link is in the description below. And then these two, I'm just going to leave it as is because I want to leave a little element of surprise for you guys. So in our custom cards, first of all, let's just look at the scopes. What do we see? We see tons of green right here. OK, so it's overpowering and we see that in our image as well. And we see it in our parade, right? How the green is channel overall is just lifted. And then the blues are down here, the reds are down here, and that's what's creating like overall this green cast. All right, so the first step to creating the pop in your image comes from custom curves, okay? And what you need to do is click on these three dots and make sure that this is checked, editable splines. And once that is set, all you have to do is this. I'm gonna go click on this guy right here on this side. Then I'm gonna grab this point I'm going to bring it in a little bit and I'm going to start raising it up. OK, so I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. And the beautiful thing about this is that nothing is clipping. Like, look at what's happening to my image. Like, yes, we're bringing up our exposure by brightening up the image, but nothing is getting clipped. OK, then I'm going to click right here. I'm going to grab this point, bring it in a little bit and then start pulling it down. OK. And now I'm just like looking at my screen and I'm seeing what feels good. Where we don't make a sacrifice of like what's happening with our character, the suit and everything in between. So we just want to add the right amount of pop. This is doing it for me. I don't want to overdo it. OK, so if I go back and forward, this is looking good. If we have to make any adjustments, we can do that later. But for now, this is looking pretty good. So that's the first step to making your image pop. I mean, look at how far we've come. OK, the second is going to be our primaries. So remember, we talked about how much green is in our image. So let's take that out. So I'm going to start off with my offset, my primaries. So look at this section right here. I'm just going to start subtracting my green. OK, and I'm going to do I'm going to go overboard and then I'm going to come back and um, I'm going to leave it somewhere around here. And this is looking much better to me. OK, so if I do before and after and you can even see it here and here that we're making a huge, huge progress. OK, overall, like all of a sudden the shirt is white uh, before there is a crazy green tint to it. Right. Everything just belongs like look at the white buildings in the back. OK, everything is coming through. I am actually very happy with that. And even when we go right here and look at our vector scope, let me just look at it. Now what we can do one more check is to hover over the skin and see where it is. So if I go right here on the skin, look, it's right in the center where it's supposed to be, where the skin indicator is. That gets to tell me that we've done a really good job because this is before and look at where the skin was and then this is after. OK, we can still clearly see that on the top end, it's still a bit more green biased. So at this point, what I'm going to do 
um, is a couple of things, okay? I can subtract some yellow. And then what I can do is I can try to add red into my image. And now if I do before and after, I feel like it's more believable. Okay, I'm not going to spend more time on that. This was just to give you an example of like, once the colors are separated, the blue from the white and the green, all of a sudden, like, look at how much separation we have than this. This is just like a one wash, like a green tint. Here, the hair pops out, right? The lamp pops out, like the shirt, suit, leaves, everything belongs, okay? Now, the third step is going to be a point of interest. In this case, it's our guy and especially his face. What is he looking at? It's, it's the expression on his face. But because the entire image is so bright and the only part that's dark here is the actual point of interest. So what we have to do is we sort of have to reverse it. We have to make this our focal point and everything else should just like kind of fall off. How am I going to do that? Instead of using a circular window around him like an oval, I would suggest using a custom shape. And the reason being is that, so look at this, right? We have some light coming through from here and from here. It's only this area that's kind of dark. So I want it to be very organic, like the, the change that I'm going to make. I don't want it to be a geometric shape. So that's what's going on, okay? So I'm going to create a shape like this. You're going to see what I'm talking about. So I'm just literally going to create a shape like this. I'm going to go under my gain and I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to lift it up too much first and I'm going to kind of bring it back. I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. Now I'm going to go under my window again and I'm going to soften it out. Okay, so I'm going to go back in there. I'm going to soften it out a little bit, something like this. And now if I do before and after, look at the difference that we made. At this point, all we have to do is just go under tracking and click on this guy and it's going to track forward and track back. This is a new feature in Resolve 17.4. Okay, so everything is tracked and everything is looking good. Even if I do this and we go back and forth, like look at the difference that we made. I mean, just look at this. All right, so I'm gonna go back to our hero frame. This is before, this is after. Massive, massive difference. Now in this node, I'm gonna go in and create an oval, something like that, around here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something like this. And then I'm going to feather it out, okay? We're going to go to around 24, 25-ish. I'm going to invert it. And now, again, we're going to go under our primaries. I'm going to take my gain, and I'm going to bring it down. And I obviously go too far first and then pull it up. And that's all I want to do. I don't want to go too crazy. So this, to me, is pretty good. Okay, so I can just leave it. I don't need to track this. So if I go before and after, like look at how my eyes go straight to his face. If I take these two and turn them on and off, look at the difference we're making. Before, after, there's a purpose now. Obviously, I'm explaining as I'm doing this, so it's taking time, but when you're going to be doing it on your own, it's going to be a lot faster, okay? So these are the three simple tricks. They are applicable on anything and everything. It could be a food commercial. It could be a car commercial. It could be a movie. Um, and you can apply these simple rules to make your image pop. And now if you look at it and, you know, however you feel, right? Like if you just think, okay, it's now it's too red. Now it's too green. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can go and do it from this point. But to me, this looks pretty good. I can go back in my custom curves and kind of go, Okay, do I want to do anything to it? Like at this point, like, do I want to kind of like keep messing with it to give it a little bit of a high key look, right? Like that's up to me now. I can go here and pull it up like that if I want to, and then just make the entire image pop even a little bit more. And I, honestly, I kind of like that. So having a structure like this, is beautiful because you can always just go back and forth between these, but you know exactly what you're doing. And at this point, what I see is that we can still make some adjustments in our white balance. What am I talking about? So you see my blues right here? 
compared to my greens and my reds, right? So my blues are down here. Now I'm not going to do offset. I'm going to individually make changes. So I'm going to go under my gain. I'm just going to take my blue channel and I'm going to start lifting it up until we have a pretty close to a pure white. So if I do before on that and then after, you can see the difference that we're making. And we're really like making the white white. Okay, like pure white, like, and you see it, you get to see it everywhere. Um, I, it might be just a bit much, so I'm going to pull it down just a tiny bit. So something like this, but I feel like it still makes a huge difference uh, to where we were. And this to me looks super, super clean. Okay, like if you look at his shirt, how clean this looks like this is before this is after I mean, look at it. Same thing with like skin tones. I mean, just look at that hair. <laughs> it's almost green, but like what it looks like now. And then outside, right before and after. And then same thing with like, if we just look at the window pane, too green, unrealistic, the right type of gray that it should be. Okay. So to me, this looks pretty good. What we should do now is I'm going to kill all of this and we're going to start with our first change, which was our custom curves to make our image pop. Then we went in, balanced our image. And then after balancing our image, we put some emphasis on his face, made a huge difference, and then brought everything else around him down. And guys, these are the three simple tricks that you can use to pop anything that you're working on. Let's check out the final look in full screen. So I wasn't lying when I said it's going to be one of the simplest and easiest tutorial on this channel, but you saw the effect, like the transformation is pretty significant. Color grading doesn't need to be rocket science. It doesn't always need to be extremely complicated. You can simplify it and strip it down to what we did here and still get amazing results. Now, if you want to dive even deeper and learn more about the proper note tree structure and how that can help you on big projects, then do not forget to watch my free training. Link is up top and in the description below. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor. It will mean the world to me. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and remember, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed. I will see you guys in the next video.